Right, so hey guys and welcome back to another PHP tutorial. If you guys remember, um, in the last tutorial we created a website that would allow us to basically um, enter your username and a login password and then redirect us to a session page. This was only done using fixed variables and not really the way it should be done by linking it to a database. So in today's tutorial we're going to be carrying on with linking it to a database so that we have a register interface as well. <clears throat> So first of all what you want to do is go to ZAMP and turn on the Apache and SQL servers. Once you're done with that you want to go ahead and click on the admin for the SQL because that's where we're going to be managing the database for this system. Create a new database. I'm just going to call this um, um, trial system. And then we click on create. And then in this database, we're going to create different tables that are going to store the information that we need. So the first table, we're going to store users. So the different users that are going to be registered on the server. So type in the username, I mean the name of the table called users, and then click on go. Once we're done with that, we're going to create the different fields that are going to be stored in the table. So what we want to be stored is an ID that will automatically be incremented for every username that is selected so the type is going to be integer and go over to the AI auto increment and then click on um, tick it up and then click on go so next what we're going to be saving is the username and password and that's about it so we'll be saving ID username and password in a real life login system obviously you'll be saving more details about this and also like um, hashing the password so no one's able to crack it and stuff but today I'm just gonna keep it really simple because this tutorial is really uh, intended for beginners so what we're gonna do is change this from integer type to either text or worker we can do it whichever one you like um, I prefer text personally and then you can set a length if you like as well. So the username I'm going to set a length of 50 and the password um, 30. Okay. So once we're done with that, we're going to click on save. And then as you see right here, we have a trial system database inside with one table and it's called users. And we have ID, username and password. So what we want to do first of all is go over to our code from last time. Um, I, if you haven't watched the last tutorial, I really recommend you do because otherwise this wouldn't make sense. Link's going to be in the description. So in the last tutorial, as you know, we created a login page. So in this one, we're going to create a register page as well within the same system. <clears throat> so this bit right here is the form that allows us to log in into the system. While we're also going to, what we're going to do is create another button down here. We're going to do input type equals submit name equals um, register start Oops. and then the value is going to be equal to register obviously okay we're just going to do a br okay so now if you go over to localhost my folder is called login and register wait oops so if i go over there uh, as you see right here oops, as you see right here we have another button called register and we have a button called login both of them don't have any actions assigned to them because i've taken off the code which i had from last tutorial um so when we click on this essentially what it should do is take this information check if a user already exists with this name in our database if he does it shouldn't allow that username to be used again and if he doesn't it should register the user so that's what should happen and if user clicks on login it should just log in and log him into the account checking if the account exists obviously so what we would want to do first of all is do the if asset statement so we're going to do if asset is a post so if the event of a post happens and if the value that is submitted equals um, register start, then what we're going to do is we're going to grab the username dollar post username, and also we're going to grab the password. So we're just going to copy this over again, 
and paste it right here. So what these two lines of code are going to do is um, they're going to grab the username and password which is going to be posted from these input boxes once the login button is pressed and it's going to save them into the username and password variable. So we're just going to tab this as register so that it's going to be different to the login variable we're going to create later. Once that's done, what you want to do is um, start a MySQL connection. So MySQL connect um, localhost because that's where the server is running. Uh, localhost and the user is going to be the root, root user, and the password is none. Once you're done with the connection, what you want to do next is um, select the database. So MySQL, select database. The database name was system trial. Okay. I'm just going to check that again. Yeah, it's trial system actually. So just the other way around. Okay. Now that we've connected to the database and we've selected the right database, we're going to write a query. So we're going to do mysql dot in query query and in the query what we're going to do is we're going to select um, star from table of users so star means everything select everything from users where username which is this we're referencing to this right now where username equals the variable username that we've saved up here so we're saying select any information that where from the table users where the username the field right here is equal to the username that we just submitted okay and then we're going to call this variable um, request okay once we're done with that we're going to do um, mysql num rows request right and then we're gonna say results so what we've just done is we've created another variable called result and what this variable is gonna do is it's gonna grab the amount of rows um, that the use that for this request so let's say there is one username which equals the username we've just entered it's gonna re uh, return one if there's none it's gonna return none if there's two obviously it's gonna return two so what we're essentially doing is checking whether the given username which is entered um, into the field here already exists within the table so that it doesn't get overwritten. So we're going to write an if condition based on that. Actually, we're just going to test this first. So echo result. Let's do a quick refresh on the page and we'll do register. Undefined variable and usernames that on 26. 26. Oh, so there was a mistake right there. So it's reg username, not just username. Refresh again. And as we see right here, when we click on register, there's zero users registered with that name. So if we go ahead and insert a record manually into the system, insert, and the username is going to be this one right here. Just copy that over here. Username, password. Oh, my God. doesn't want to copy for some reason there you go um, password is going to be one two three and the ID should automatically do its job so once we're done with that we're going to go back to users as you see right here we now have the username admin at iss.co.uk and a password so now when we try to click on register it should return one because Obviously, there's one record in the database with that username. So now, based on this concept, we're going to write an if condition in the code. So instead of echoing result, what we're going to do is we're going to say if if the result is less than one. So if it's obviously zero, then we're going to say um, we're going to write a query that's going to insert the username and password into the database so that the user will have an account. So we're going to do 
MySQL query um, insert into users values um, reg username we need single quotes as well I think reg username comma reg password and we're just going to do a blank one for the ID so that it, it just ignores it automatically okay it needs to be in the same order otherwise things might get messed up so once we're done with that query we're just going to close that and then we're going to write the else statement so if or if obviously by any chance there isn't any so if the result is on zero that means there's no record I mean if it's if it's one or greater than one obviously there is a record so we're just going to say echo account with this username already exists okay time for a quick check I'm going to refresh account with this username already exists and now we're going to try to sign up using a different account name just click on that again not going to change anything so if we try to log in using this which hasn't been registered yet it refreshes and now if we go to I just want to get rid of this for now so I'm just gonna go into incognito and try accessing it really quickly um, login and register okay that's perfect I'm just gonna close this down Copy. because it keeps um, pushing in the password that's why it's a bit annoying so now what we're gonna do is go and check so as you see right here since we didn't have a um, user based on this uh, username so Johan Gudino it automatically incremented the user into the system and if we try logging in with the same username again so Johan Gudino if you try that if you click on register it should say you account with this username already exists so if we do a new username like this it's just gonna create the account and if we go back and refresh as you see right here it's created the account so when it does create the account we just need to say echo account has been created right so now that that's sorted what we want to do next is um, we're gonna go on to uh, the login sessions so we're gonna say else if this set is a dollar post login login start I think it is yeah it's login start if that's the case then we're gonna grab the username and password again I'm just gonna copy and paste this because there's no point of typing it again and then just take off the reg okay and then we move on to making an SQL connection so we can just copy this again okay this as well so we're literally just repeating the procedure here um, this is quite a short form of code because we're not using any security um, measures and stuff just so that it's easy for you guys to understand so what we're doing here again is we're taking a request um, we're making a request so we're going to call this login request instead and then we're going to call this the login result and change that to login I mean you can keep the same variable names but I just prefer to change them up so we're going to say select from users where username equals username equals change this to the username variable and we also need to add a statement and say and password equals the password variable now we're verifying the password as well so now the login result if it equals one that means that the login has succeeded if not that means the password's wrong obviously so we're going to do a concept based on that so we say if login result is um, greater than one 
let's say if it's less than one, which means it has failed, then we say echo incorrect username or password, right? And else, that means the password is correct. We're just going to do um, a redirect. So we're going to use a header tag to redirect the user. I mean, a meta. So I'm just going to paste that in. So what this is going to do is redirect the user to the correct page. So username. I'm just going to get rid of this. So it's going to redirect the user to something called session.php, which was another blank type of file we just created last time in the last tutorial. Um, and uh, we're going to pass the information about the username being obviously username onto the next page too. So well, let's just save this and quickly rerun it. I'm just going to run this again. Refresh account with this username already exists. So, okay, we're going to type in. We're going to create a new legit account. So, John123, and the password's going to be 123. Register. Account has been created. Okay. John123, and I'm going to put the wrong password. Login. Incorrect username or password. Okay. John123, and then we put 123. And as we see right here, the system's working perfectly fine right now. So, based on obviously the database and the linking PHP code, it's verifying whether the username or password is already existing in the system and then allowing you to register and also later on um, allowing you to log in simply using the simple script that we've, we've created within this tutorial. Um, obviously it's missing a lot of security concepts like um, ch uh, using MD5 and stuff to hash the passwords but we can look into that in a future tutorial as well as obviously styling issues which haven't been included in this because I just wanted to keep it as basic and simple for you guys as possible. Anyway guys, hope I was able to help you during this tutorial. Um, I look forward to helping you out even further if you type it, type your problems in the comment sections or any errors that you have. The next tutorial is going to be about styling this website a bit more to make it look more, more suitable and similar to a login site and register site. So stay tuned for that, as well as the other tutorials that are going to follow about PHP. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.